Uh, this is the uh, Fed Electric uh, Flame Light Bulb I got at a Home Depot in the States. Uh, it uh, draws 3 watts and produces uh, 80 lumens, so it's not really a light source, it's more for effect. Um, but it's a very convincing effect indeed. If you point the bulb uh, this direction here, it looks like there's a flame coming upwards. And if you put it this direction, it actually switches around, so there must be some sort of switch so it knows which direction it's going. Um, it's a very satisfying effect, without question. It uh, has a real emulation, and uh, if you're looking for that in a home, I guess, uh, a great bulb. Uh, um, of course, I'm more interested in the actual electronics. So let's uh, tear this apart and see how they uh, constructed this bulb. Uh, so the uh, diffuser dome's been sawn off, and uh, you can see two polycarbonate lenses in that. There's a matrix of LEDs on uh, both sides. If I turn the uh, bulb on, uh, you can see, of course, the uh, flame pattern has been programmed in. That's at a slight angle here, and uh, I presume we're going to find a microprocessor, actually. There's a lot of LEDs here to drive, and, and a matrix as well. Um, and, of course, you can see this behavior now. If you tilt the bulb downwards, uh, the flame coming up this way. If you tilt it this way, coming up uh, this way. Let's uh, take this assembly out uh, further, and uh, let's find out the electronics down here. Uh, so just a little closer look at the uh, two shells here. It's uh, polycarbonate, but then uh, they've taken these uh, lenses here and they've actually ground them. I'm not sure it'll show up in the photograph here. You can see there's slightly more opaque here. So what they did is they cast the part or injection mold the part, and then they've uh, done a post-processing step where they milled across and uh, caused the uh, surfaces here to be slightly more opaque, which of course gives you a nice diffusion, which is what you're looking for in a uh, candle effect, I should imagine. The actual uh, assembly is uh, quite complicated for a $15 bulb. Uh, an AC to DC power supply here, uh, going into the uh, base of the bulb. And then uh, here, of course, the main assembly. Uh, the LEDs here, uh, undoubtedly a microprocessor. Uh, this little black gadget is a uh, switch. If you uh, twist it one way or the other, it uh, senses uh, its orientation. Uh, it looks like a small diode is here. And then uh, a smattering of discrete components here. Uh, we'll zoom into this uh, integrated circuit, but uh, it's actually been uh, de-marked, and uh, we're going to have to throw this one into an acid uh, etch and uh, take out what kind of controller is sitting there. So the controller has been removed and de-encapsulated. This is a slide. This is just an adhesive uh, on the white. And in the middle there is the actual uh, semiconductor. This is obviously a very modern process node. It's a very small amount of silicon, which makes sense, of course, small cell price. So. Let's uh, take a look at what a uh, very modern uh, class of microcontroller looks like. Okay, this is the uh, silicon die that uh, was uh, encapsulated in that uh, package. It's um, a typical microcontroller. It's not marked in a way that I can find a data sheet, uh, SF0258170313 on the die there, uh, but there's no logo as to the maker and the package was de-identified. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that this is a uh, Chinese uh, domestic design. And uh, there's a real initiative right now in China to have the ability to design uh, uh, semiconductors across the board uh, with uh, their own designs. And uh, I was not able to find a data sheet uh, on the web that uh, matched up with this part. So the uh, center portion is the logic of the uh, device. It's a, a gate array that's been laid out by um, a computer routing program, but it's basically all digital logic that undoubtedly uh, forms a microprocessor's uh, a core CPU sections and uh, digital functions. There's 16 uh, pads on the uh, die, of course, matching up with a 16 pad uh, SOIC that uh, it's packaged into. Um, interesting sort of uh, FET uh, structure on the uh, upper left. Uh, I suspect the chip must have its own internal voltage regulator or something because uh, it's a fairly large size FET. Uh, in the section highlighted there, a uh, very analog section, I suspect that's where you would find the uh, oscillator and uh, functions like that, like three-set controller. Uh, otherwise, it looks like a very typical microcontroller, very cost-effective, very small die area. Uh, and I'm sure things used uh, in all sorts of uh, consumer products that require a, a modest bit of computing power. Uh, as always, I'll throw the photographs up on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. So this is the orientation switch. It doesn't have to be very high-duty cycle because, of course, once the bulb's installed, it'll never change, uh, probably for the life of the bulb's uh, install. Uh, now, this could be a mercury switch, but I doubt that. I think they've been long banned. If I shake it, it feels like a ball bearing. Uh, but I'll just carefully open it up and see how it's been constructed. So sure enough, it's a uh, ball bearing based design. This is the canister. You can see a golden lead uh, at the very bottom there. And that's basically the lead coming out of the package. And of course, the idea is the ball bearing rotates downwards. It, it'll touch this metal and the outer case is the contact on this side. And of course, the switch will close. And uh, here's the actual ball bearing. And it looks like they have a little uh, spacer ball bearing as well. And uh, I don't 
know how much duty stuff you get out of this design, but of course, since this thing only has to work a few times uh, successfully, uh, entirely appropriate for the application to which it's intended.